chair of uh, the Utah Technology Council. As we get started, we have some exciting announcements today. We'll get to those shortly, but first, I would like to take care of the business, the things that we're required to do. So we would like to uh, proceed as follows. We'll invite Jeff Jones up. He is our board secretary for a business review. Following Jeff, we would like to uh, invite Rich Nelson. Rich is the president and CEO of UTC for his remarks, and we will proceed to that point. Jeff. We have the clicker. Um, it doesn't reach in the back, so just say next. Okay, got it. Good afternoon. This is, uh, as Chet said, this is the business portion of the meeting. On an annual basis, we elect trustees and we also give you notice of uh, various roles that are being filled by uh, the UTC members. Uh, the first item of business is to elect a slate of trustees. As you'll recall, we have two groups of trustees. Each serve a two-year term. The first slate is listed on the board uh, on the screen for your review. You'll notice that one name is bolded. That's Gary Good of Manti Central, who's been appointed by the Executive Committee and the Board of Trustees to serve uh, an unexpired term. So uh, if I can have a motion and a second to approve the slate of trustees, and then we'll ask the technology members of UTC to vote uh, for or against. Is there a motion? In, uh, is there a motion? Steve, thank you. A second? Thank you also, Chet. All in favor of this slate of trustees, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, for your information, this is the, uh, the other group of trustees that will be voted on next year. You'll notice that several in bold are filling unexpired terms. Howard Hochhauser of uh, Ancestry.com, Robert Lolini of Biofire, Galen Murdoch, Veracity Solutions, Scott Richards, Microfocus, Steve Rockwood of Family Search, Bassam Salem of Mindshare Ventures, and Eric Sontag of Banner Bank. Uh, the next slide are the slate of uh, directors who serve, um, uh, trustees, excuse me, who serve representing educational institutions and economic development uh, organizations. You'll also note, again, in bold that uh, certain trust, trustees are filling out unexpired, unexpired terms. Can I have a motion to approve this slate of direct uh, trustees? Any, anyone want to move in favor of that? Chet, thank you. A second? Steve, thank you. All in favor, aye, please. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Well, it's great to be here. I don't, uh, we've got a huge announcement. I think the embargo has kind of gotten leaked out, but uh, uh, my fantastic chairman will be making that announcement uh, as part of his chairman's outlook. As far as my CEO remarks, I want to share with you uh, what happened to me uh, two weeks ago. I found myself in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. How many of you have been in the Atlantic time zone before? Not Eastern, Atlantic. Okay, and did you know there's another time zone east of that? It's the Newfoundland time zone. It's a half hour. So we were out in this very rural area. There are 50 UTCs around North America, 42 in the United States. And as we met in these two-day two, uh, these two meetings, the CEO retreat, they had invited, we had invited as an organization to uh, one of the most innovative leaders in the world who made an enormous difference in Finland's history. In the early 90s, Esko Ahu was the first prime minister that really started Finland on its significant path of innovation. He met with us for two days in a one-on-one -on -one conversation I had with Esco, actually a meeting. I said, Esco, 
you've got the best numbers in the world in math, science, you're noted for your teaching profession, it is absolutely at the top of your priorities. And it's made a huge difference. You put that in, into motion back in the early 90s. I said, what has made the difference? And then he said to me, it's all about getting the most brilliant students to become your teachers. And I reflected on how we're doing it here, frankly, how we're doing it throughout the United States. A trickle of our best, most brilliant students are going into teaching. He says, you've got to change that first. Teachers in Finland are so much more respected and paid so much more than even physicians. Some way, we've got that wrong. Next slide, Pete. So why should we care about K through 20 education? It's great to have the governor here. It's great to have you here as leaders. Why does K through 20 really matter to UTC? And why over the last 10 years has UTC been involved with K through 12 very actively since 2006? Why? And why the primary on June 28th? Frankly, I need your help. Frankly, this community, UT, UTC, needs your help. No, nope, go back. Okay, so the reason that uh, I'm talking about this is we are number one in every category for a state in the country. Number one, two, three, we may eke out a number five in some category. We are literally number one in every category or top five in every category except one. And that's education. We're the opposite of Finland. We're the opposite of the key, this innovative leader's advice, go get the most brilliant students to become your teachers. Within the next 10 years, what can we do to achieve that goal of being a top 10 education state? Well, today, there's a very interesting dynamic that has occurred, and my chairman will talk a little bit about this. Next slide. I'm launching my campaign today. <laughs> that seems a little over the top. Let me tell you a little story. On the uh, afternoon of the filing deadline two weeks ago, I had, uh, first of all, a member of my executive committee come to me, says, you've got to run. You've got to run in District 8, Olympus Cove to Redwood Road, I-215 north to I-80, two Senate districts. You've got to run. I said, I don't need to run. We have been actively involved more than any other organization for 10 years. We have fundamentally started to create those changes. We have changed the, gra the, the high school gr uh, graduation requirements. Recently with Aaron Sconard and uh, Jonathan Johnson, the three of us went in a year ago and changed the, that science now matters. And it's a science credit. Well, why isn't it in addition to chemistry and physics and the others? It's certainly the most uh, needed in our... On the, uh, so that afternoon, I got a call from the outgoing board member. We recruited Jennifer Johnson four years ago to displace an 18-year veteran of the school board. My neighbor, Janet Cannon. <laughs> Pretty tough. But we got Jennifer in there. Representative Chairman uh, Sam Pei told me the other day she has become a star. She's the vice chair of that board over the last four years. We haven't had this kind of relationship with, as a legislature and the leadership with the state's Office of Education and the board in years. Thank you, Jennifer Johnson. Well, Jennifer called me that afternoon at the filing deadline and said, you've got to run. I've got a personal and professional reason I can't run. I said, I'm not running. I am not running. Two and a half hours later, after she and I talked, I sent a note to my uh, executive committee, and Chet can tell you more about that, just saying, in caps, 
this is a conflict of interest. You, do you really want to allocate your president's time? This is not on my bucket list, professionally or personally. But Governor, I am a filed candidate. There are five of us. Jennifer is withdrawing this week because she can't run. Two others are really tied into the status quo. There's a very sharp young guy that's tied into the charter movement and then an independent like, uh, like me. Enough on that. We are doing so spectacular as a state, a community, a, we are the growth engine. We need to change this last major area and become a top 10 education state, including significantly increasing the pay of our younger starting teachers in the first five years. My first campaign plank, since I'm a new uh, candidate, is to significantly increase the pay of starting teachers one year to five years out by 25 to 50 percent. And my chairman and I and our executive committee have a way to do that without raising taxes, Governor. And we're eager to do that. We're eager to move that forward. We have legislative leaders here. We've got to start now. We've got 10 years to do this and uh, need your help. Frankly, on the blue sheet in front of you, Chet will ask for a couple of asks. If you live in my district or if you want to help or if, if, if your schools matter, this happens to be the swing seat. Seven or where we've been for years, seven UTC has helped put in place and encourage rigor and this is the swing seat. That's the only reason that I was willing to do this. And uh, with that, I'm going to introduce uh, uh, our governor. If you'll pull out your, uh, your sheet. Since I won't have the bully pulpit again, I want to I thank my new team. And I want to do it by showing you this annual report. Jonathan Jackson, would you stand and my team, come on over here. I want you guys, people keep asking me, how's the transition here? How, how is it when 12 years of institutional knowledge walks out the door, you know, after, not walks out the door, leaves, retires, did a fantastic job. But my new team, and I don't see all eight of us, seven of us, but they have done a fantastic job on the transition. The annual report reflects this. The board meeting this morning reflects this. The announcement by Senator Hatch that my chairman will give in about five minutes or 10, 10 or 15 minutes from now reflects this. Would you give Jonathan and our team a huge thank you? Thank you. Thank you. With that, thank you to Scott. Thank you. And we're going to do some really cool things today. This, this comes from this two-hour conversation we had years ago. Your story needs to be told. And today's the day to be. So you can read what the governor has accomplished. I was bragging on the, in an in a in interview the other day about what kind of leadership we have. And I have talked about some of my colleagues around the country, their governors are serving time. Well, the flip side, Governor, is this is a really outstanding, remarkable governor. And uh, most friendly, business friendly, growth state, we're number one in every category and it reflects the leadership of uh, Governor Gary, Gary Herbert. And if he'd come up, I also want to, I, before you give him a hand, come on up here, Governor. So I had the good fortune of traveling with the governor last summer, and he told me a story about counselors and how they reflected his and changed his life. And now he's going to be the keynote at our counselors event when 24 of us are going to go and show how cool technology is, and he's going to tee that up but uh, with his own personal story. But let's give the governor a huge thanks for his leadership. Well, thank you, Rich, and thanks to all of you. I'm honored to be here with you today. And uh, uh, as I see the, the schedule you've got here, uh, my wife's words echo in my mind. 
I've asked her on uh, a couple of occasions and she's responded the same way and if I'd asked her today she would have responded the same way. I've said look I'm going to speak to a very significant group of entrepreneurs and business people. Uh, I would know that I would like to say something will be educational maybe motivational and maybe even inspirational to this audience and I suggest Jeanette uh, give me some counsel on what you think I should do or say and she said well Gary having heard you speak before what would be inspirational to me would be if you're just brief so I'll try to be very brief here this morning I know you have a lot going on and <clears throat> my congratulations to those who are award recipients I appreciate the friendship and the leadership of Rich Nelson and his leadership team and all that's been accomplished with UTC. Uh, clearly we're having great success and, and my congratulations to Rich and Chet and Jonathan and, and Scott Watterson, my good friend here today and uh, all of you as members of the Utah Technology Council. Um, we are doing remarkably good things and you are a big part of the reason why. And I also want to pay tribute to my legislative colleagues here that uh, are a part of this effort too, uh, that are making sure that we have good tax policy, regulation reform, that we're doing everything we can to empower the private sector to give you, the entrepreneur, the opportunity to be as successful as you can possibly be in a free market competitive society. Now I believe in free market capitalism. I'm very concerned about the direction the state is, or even the country is going, as we see what's taking place out there with a loss of an understanding of free market, uh, free market capitalism. In fact, we don't even say capitalism anymore. It's almost like a dirty word. And we have an embracement of a more socialistic approach. In fact, we have a candidate today who's gaining traction, if you can believe it. Uh, as an avowed socialist. I find that very puzzling. Particularly, it's puzzling not only when we find 30% of the people of Iowa today identify themselves as socialists after the first uh, presidential election, and as I'm giving Terry Branstad a little bit of a hard time about, hey, the heartland of America and 30% by exit polling uh, self-declare as they're socialists. And then we have uh, Mr. Sanders come to Utah and 14,000 of mostly young people of Utah show up and give him a warm welcome. We're a cordial and friendly group, that's okay, but it was so well received that he came back two or three days later and did the same thing. That's puzzling to me and as uh, Margaret Thatcher has taught us, the only thing wrong with socialism is pretty soon you run out of other people's money. And uh, you understand that as business people, we've got to not only talk about STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math, we not only need to be a top 10 uh, state when it comes to educational achievement, but we've got to bring back the principles that have made America great. My recommendation to Rich Nelson, if he makes it onto the school board, is I've made a suggestion to the school board that I hope they're thinking about and going to incorporate into our state standards and that the local school board incorporate into our curriculum. And that's in a more robust section on free market capitalism, uh, economics. Our young people when they leave high school ought to understand exactly how the system works and know that in fact free market capitalism has given us the best goods and services for the most people at the lowest prices of any system ever devised by man in the history of the world. So again, I applaud Rich's willingness to step up and run for the state school board in areas where he can contribute mightily. Let me just uh, be brief here and say, I thank you all as business people for your contributions to our successful economy. We all know that the success of uh, Utah economically is really uh, quite exciting. It, for some people it's almost unbelievable. For people outside of Utah, the most common question to me as the governor of Utah is, why Utah? What have you done there that's created this great economic engine that is leading the nation today in uh, economic uh, creation? We, we started as a goal. You know, we, I came in, as you know, six years ago at the depths of the Great Recession, and we 
put a very ambitious goal out there. We said, you know, we're not going to uh, sit here at the, uh, and languish. We're going to turn it around and become the best performing economy in America and a premier global business destination. That was the goal. We gave cards to everybody in our staff and, and to say, let's focus together on this. And although people said you, we couldn't do it, uh, we found that last year we actually achieved the number one ranking in the, in the nation for private job growth creation in this country. Nine out of 12 months of 2015. A remarkable achievement, even though we had naysayers out there, and of course, your sector of the, of the uh, economy, 5,000 high-tech jobs and, uh, and technology and clean tech and, and life science companies, you represent now 10% of the jobs we have in the state. And you're paying above the, the typical average. It's great professions. And we are emerging as one of the best high-tech states in the country today. We use the phrase Silicon Slopes. And it's not just kind of a slogan name. It's actually happening. Uh, Rich talks about the success we're having. Venture capital is, is flowing into Utah in ways that's never uh, happened before. Val Hale, my go-ahead director, is here somewhere, right here in front of me. I can't see for looking. Doing a great job. You know, Silicon Valley in, in California is really the, where the, most of the capital is stockpiled there. And um, the interesting contrast is they have most of the capital. But in Utah right now, we don't do as many deals, but we just have bigger deals. Our average venture capital in Utah now per deal is about $58 million per deal. In Silicon Valley in California and Palo Alto area, it's about 18 or $19 million a deal. They do a lot more, we do a lot fewer, but ours are bigger. Again, I like the trend, we need to increase that, and I think opportunities in our future are going to be dramatic. An American essayist and playwright James Baldwin once said, those who say it can't be done are usually interrupted by those doing it. That's exactly what's happened here in Utah. When we took on this ambition, it can't be done. But get out of the way because we have people here who believe it can be done and in fact are doing it. We see remarkable evidence of that. Many here in this audience have got stories to tell of great success and it's been enabled because we have a very business friendly climate. The best business climate in America today by virtually every accounting uh, review, analysis and ranking system out there. We're, if we're not number one, we're in the top two or three. Um, we have, uh, I think, a unique culture that we benefit from, a, a kind of a can-do approach to things. My father, who was uh, successful in business, uh, was uh, an Idaho farm boy, <clears throat> raised on the farm, didn't have a lot of education, um, and yet became successful because of not only a can-do effort and attitude, but a work ethic that was second to anybody I've ever known. He learned on the farm from his father, a slogan. It was our family slogan. It's now my family slogan. And you can use it. We call it the eight W's. Work will win when wishy-washy wishing won't. We have challenges out there, but most of those challenges can be uh, uh, met head-on and overcome if we roll up our sleeves and work. And particularly if we're willing to work together. Help pull that wagon up the road, not pull against each other. We might have differences, but coming together for the good of the whole and working together will, in fact, help us find success. Uh, we see that in your industry, 93% uh, of the respondents to our polling uh, show that uh, you all, 93% plan to hire more people this, uh, this year and, and the next 12 months. That would bring us to about 2,400 new technology jobs compared to what we have here 1845 this year in new technology jobs. And so um, you're optimistic, you're succeeding, you're, you're, uh, you're doing great things. We do have challenges, and the challenges, again, Rich has kind of touched on, and that is where are the new uh, the, the pipeline issues? Where are the new labor coming from? We need to make sure that we're producing out of our education system. Uh, those that have skills that align up with the demands you have in the marketplace. That's why our emphasis on STEM. Again, working with you has made it a priority. Working with the legislature, we've made it a priority. Uh, we've put in uh, from 2014 through 2016 to establish and operate our STEM Action Center uh, allocated um, 
41 million dollars in those uh, two year period of time. And we just allocated another 10.2 million for fiscal year 2017. So we're putting large amounts of money into an area that we think is important that you're a main uh, part of. And we're prioritizing STEM education and making sure that it's, we're going to have the labor force that you need to continue to grow and expand your businesses. Uh, we also are working with innovative programs to see if there's better ways to do things in partnershiping with government and the private sector. And I'll just mention very quickly here in my uh, closing remarks here. Uh, last September I launched what we call the Utah Aerospace Pathways Program. Aerospace is a very significant growing part of our economy has great potential and a great future. But again, like many of you, they're finding a hard time getting the labor they need. And so what can we do? Well, we've worked with our uh, colleges, uh, the private sector and the government stepping in there and providing a program which allows high school students to get early training. They can actually be an intern, actually get paid. They get credit for this in their schooling and get a head start on entering the workforce when it comes to uh, this strategically important industry of our economy here in Utah. And success often begets success. Not only is that taken off with our aerospace pathways program, but now we have a diesel technology program, pathways program, which is uh, again taking off in a remarkable way. And not only is it taking off, but it's being discovered. We're invited to come back here later this year and speak to congressional hearings and talk about this unique pathways program which we've devised here. That's seven months after it started and now we're making some national headlines on the successes that we're having and I'm anxious to go back and share that with others. It's not a zero-sum game. Uh, we're leading the way. It's nice to be the leader and having great uh, success. So let me just say good things are happening in Utah. We've empowered the private sector in ways that's never happened before and you're responding in, in dramatic fashion. The first governor of Utah, Brigham Young, you all know from your history books, said when he came into this valley, this is the right place, drive on. That's good counsel for us. Uh, I, mean, I, I know my children ask uh, every once in a while, when, what was it like in the good old days? Well, I'm here to tell you these are the good old days, and you're making them even better. So uh, as the 17th governor of Utah, I say to you, Utah is still the right place. It's the best place to, to, to live. It's the best place to raise a family. It's the best place to do business. And you are driving on and making sure that we, in fact, become that beacon on the hill for this country that's lost its way in many aspects. I'm proud to be the governor of the greatest state in America today. Uh, we have opportunities to shape the outcome of this country by being the good example that we are today. So God bless you for your efforts. Thank you for your success, for your work ethic, for what you do, and making this such a great place to live. And I'm honored to be with you today and honoring all of you for your success and these special honorees today. Thank you so very much. Governor, we appreciate uh, all the work that you've done, continue to do, and, you, and uh, your staff that are here as well. Uh, the one thing I will say about the governor, he, uh, he, we, I ran into him in D.C., I don't even know if he remembers this, at a uh, NGA event, and um, he was just hanging out. And uh, it was, I, I, he's wondering who this stranger was. This was about four years, maybe five years ago. I kept rolling back, talking to the governor, and, and we had a great conversation. But uh, the one thing that has really meant a lot to me is the governor has stayed the course. I know every one of his, everyone on his staff here can pull out their cards and say, this is what we're focused on. Justin's doing it. But it has made a difference in our state, and uh, some of us have heard some of these points multiple times, but we have stayed the course for governor. We greatly appreciate it. I think we should give him another big hand. So. And we will make up for some time now. Um, I'm trying to avoid comments about politicians. Rich was up here, so he's one now, in addition to the governor. But uh, we, uh, Rich mentioned uh, his run for the school board. He was pressured into this. And um, for those of you that don't realize, this is one of the, the, our state school board is one of the most significant groups that has impact on our flow, our workflow, or workforce flow in the state. Most of us take it all for granted. How many of you have ever been to a state school board meeting? Let's see a show of hands. Don't be shy. 
We have most of our legislators up here and a few others that have. I have, but it, it, this is where things happen that have significant impact on what comes out of our K-12 system as well as K-20. So uh, we, Rich got pressured into it. He's, he is sticking to it, but uh, it's very important that we understand and get more engaged, especially now as we have this unique climate in our state where we have supportive legislators that really care about what's going on. They understand the issues. Those that will be awarded today, I can vouch that they they deserve these awards and they care. They really care about industry. They care about our kids and uh, everything that's going on. And, and they see the flow that so many of us have often griped about over the years. We don't now. But uh, it's very meaningful and we're in a unique position as a state. Um, if I, we can get the slides up, I'm going to move quickly through them. If uh, There we go. There's three points that I would just want to share quickly. You'll see some changes in UTC over the next several months. Um, we've recognized that we're in a unique position as an organization, and it's important that we evolve. As capital has flooded into the state over the last decade, there are a lot of other organizations that have popped up that are fulfilling vital roles and critical needs in our state. You know, whether it's working with startup organizations, whether it's filling needs from capital, whether it's uh, angel investments, VC investment, or even private equity, or uh, debt, whatever it may be, um, it's critical that UTC continues to maintain its role. We realize that our role as an organization is really more of that of the keeper of the ecosystem. Oftentimes there are startups that, that don't understand how to get engaged. CEOs in these small organizations don't have time. But we realize that we can sponsor these organizations. We can partner with them. And many of us that are here not only mentor, but many of you have desires to mentor and help other organizations and share the experiences that you've had. So you'll see us be very intentional about creating those opportunities. We have several of the Board of Trustees that have volunteered to help guide and direct. And there are probably about 25 other organizations in the state that many of you are engaged with. In fact, I'll ask this question. How many Many of you are in, involved in mentoring other leaders, involved in other organizations that are tech related or somewhat tech related, uh, whether it's uh, early on, early angel, angel financing, helping startups, or even like the Start Foundation or some of these other organizations. Can I see a show of hands? So many of us already are. And we realize that this is an opportunity for us as UTC to help support these organizations and to hear back from all of you that are members so that we know what's going on and we can provide the necessary supports. Where we are, you know, incredibly impactful is relating to policy and advocacy and oft times younger organizations don't realize this or know about it. So we're hoping that we can help pull the industry together and not create divisions and we can actually avoid them. You'll see us rebranding. There's a lot of work going on. Bruce Law, who's on our executive committee is driving this uh, well and uh, he'll incor he's incorporating a lot of the comments he's spoken with many of you and you'll see some exciting uh, rebranding coming out and aligned with this um, as, as well so please be aware and then my final announcement let's go to the next slide uh, you know over the years Senator Hatch's office has been instrumental for the past uh, 12 years in fact in helping us get and find key CEOs, industry leaders to speak at our Hall of Fame. And this year, I think we've raised the bar again. So with all the changes that are going on, we've raised the bar. You'll see some other exciting things, but we'd like to go to the next slide and let Senator Hatch make this announcement. I believe Melanie, though Melanie is here right in front. We want to give special thanks to Melanie and Rob and other uh, staff members on his team that have helped really bring these CEOs to our state to the Hall of Fame. So, Chuck, if you could hit that. Siri, who's coming to Utah in September? Hi, Senator. In September, Tim Cook will speak at the Utah Technology Council's Hall of Fame event. I'm excited to welcome Tim Cook to Utah this fall. Perhaps more than anyone else, Tim and Apple are in the middle of the biggest tech issues of the day, including user privacy, encryption, and intellectual property rights protections. The talented individuals and innovative companies that make up Utah's Silicon Slopes will have a unique opportunity to hear from one of the tech industry's most admired leaders. All right, so exciting news. So thank you, Senator Hatch and Melanie and, and all that were involved. Um, this is a 
Hey, this, this does raise the bar, and we're very excited that uh, Tim Cook has agreed to be here. Um, it will be a wonderful Hall of Fame event. That is September 30th, by the way. Mark it on your calendars. That was the date that we could get Tim Cook and the center to, to agree to uh, be in the same room at the same time. So thank you once again. Um, we are excited about it. Let's shift gears a little bit now, though, and uh, move to the presentation of our awards. Uh, we have several significant impactors in the state and uh, very impactful people. We'd like to invite first our legislators, if they would come up. I've been asked to share a few remarks on, on uh, all of the individuals. In fact, I've been asked to stay on the script, which is a little hard for me. But um, we're pleased to acknowledge the successes they've had. So if all of our legislators that are here could come up over to the left side of the stage. Rich, you're up here with me. Great. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. And uh, I know the governor has to slip out to another key meeting. Representative Val Peterson, Representative Dean Sampe, Senator Stewart Adams, and Senator Ann Milner. And we want to thank Senator Ann Milner, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today, and Representative Val Peterson for sp sponsoring Senate Bill uh, 103, which is Strategic wor Workforce Investments with $1.5 million in ongoing funding. For those of you that don't know, ongoing funding is very important. That means initiatives will continue on. We won't start and then stop and wonder if it's going to happen again. So this is critical and uh, one of the reasons why, we'll re why we are recognizing them. This is an excellent incentive to start creating short-term training options for high-paying, high-demand, high-impact jobs to address the state's uh, severe IT talent shortage. It will establish a process for investing strategically in workforce development through stackable credentials using a regional grant process. Many of you may have heard of micro-credentials or badges or stackable credentials. This ties right along with this, right along with this national movement. We as a state are leading out legislatively, which is very valuable. And Senator Milner and Representative Peterson have been consistent advocates and defenders of the technology community. We want to give them a big hand and, and uh, recognize them. Rich is going to present these awards. All right, next we greatly appreciate Representative John Notwell and Senator Stuart Ad Adams for introducing and helping pass House Bill 277. The personalized learning, we're trying to get the cues in the back in case you're wondering. Um, they're teaching amendments with 10 million ongoing funding plus 5 million one-time funding. This funding demonstrates one of the strongest signs that Utah is serious about moving its education system into the 21st century. Um, and, and as a, a CEO that works in the K-12 and K-20 field specifically, this is innovative legislation. We are pushing the envelope as a state. We're serious about it. And I am off script. But it's exciting that we're doing these things. Um, it will provide teachers with professional development to update technology capabilities within classrooms by providing the necessary hardware and software to foster an environment for successful learning. Additionally, there's planning requirements in districts that they need to take initiative to make sure they're organized and that things actually happen. That we get results from the dollars that we're investing. So, and again, I'm off script, but those are important key points. So let's give uh, Representative Notwell and Senator Adams a big hand. And then finally, um, in his role as co-chair of the Executive Appropriations Committee, Representative Dean Sampe has been a crucial champion by helping to support the technology industry's need to build a highly skilled workforce. One example of this is his long-term support to increase funding for the STEM Action Center with three million ongoing funding, keywords again, during the last legislative session. In addition, he was instrumental in getting one and a half million dollars in ongoing funding for Senate Bill 103, Strategic Workforce Initiative. Let's give the, the uh, uh, representative a big hand.
side. Now we'd like to invite the rest of the awardees to come up. And if you could all stand on this side of the stage as you're recognized, it would be greatly appreciated. So again, thank you, uh, all of you dedicated legislators, for the uh, wonderful things that you've done. So those of you who are receiving awards, I think that you know that it is in our, our uh, plan. So first off, we'll invite Jeff Rogers up here. So Jeff has, uh, I don't know if you're aware of Jeff, he is, he's with Paul Rogers and Associates. Uh, Jeff has been instrumental as, uh, in, in lobbying efforts and helping to drive important issues to UTC and our state. Jeff needs no introduction. Um, he's been very active in the public policy forum, which there are many members. How many of you have been to a public policy meeting? See a show of hands. Many, many. We encourage you to attend. Jeff has been the principal strategist and lobbyist helping us achieve remarkable results over the past five years. He's understated, but one of the most respected tier one lobbyists in the state. I can attest to that personally. We greatly appreciate Jeff and his tireless efforts to advance policy that benefits our members and the tech community at large. Let's give Jeff a big hand. All right, our STEM champion, Brent Peterson with Comcast. Brent, if you could come up on the stage. During Utah's 2016 legislative session, Brent was the strongest advocate for increasing long-term funding for the STEM Action Center. Through Brent's leadership, Comcast has emerged as the leading industry partner in supporting the STEM Action Center through its STEM media campaign. How many of you seen the STEM commercials on television? We know who watches TV. Uh, I did see two, but uh, they're always at the wrong time of day. Anyway, they're wonderful. I've actually seen them all, but uh, they're great commercials. Because of his efforts and support of so many, and the support of so many others, the STEM Action Center received a long-term commitment of funding that will allow students to retain access to valuable learning tools, what we care about most, learning. They are now showing substantial achievement. Brent has led efforts for... In for industry's $3.1 million private industry match for the STEM Action Center creating the statewide Curiosity Lease campaign. Let's give Brent a big hand. All right, next we'd like to invite our academic leader of the year, Michael Savoie. Is Michael here? There he is. Michael's at uh, Utah Valley University. He's been recognized as the Academic Leader of the Year due to his leadership in helping us launch the Tech Hire Utah Job Training Initiative. Utah Valley University emerged as a strong partner by offering innovative job training programs to skill up Utah residents for high demand careers in technology. This program will fuel the growth of Utah's thriving 5,000 plus tech uh, companies by helping companies find qualified employees. This is, a, this is a faster way to get people ready for the job. It's very significant, and again, we're leading out as a state. In addition, Dean Savoie has become the recognized leader producing competency-based based training, directly benefiting students and industry. Michael is an active participant at UTC Public Policy Forums and is very much involved in helping us find solutions to the major talent shortage problems we currently face. Let's give Dean a big hand. Alright, our Emerging Exec of the Year, Cody Broderick, in what language? Cody, if you can join us. Thank you. Alright, there we go. As founder and CEO of In What Language, Cody works tirelessly to deliver outstanding service to his customers. His ability to serve others and care about the relationship more than the transaction is admirable. Sounds like an entrepreneur. We have enjoyed watching his company grow and thrive and cheer on their many successes. We're very excited for them. His positive energy is contagious and he truly exemplifies an emerging technology exec. Big hand for Cody. All right, um, our HR Leader of the Year, Sue Ursus from Land Desk. There's Sue. Uh, 
Out of hundreds of HR executives, she has been selected to receive the HR Leader of the Year. Sue is, well round, is a well-rounded global HR executive who cares about people and has achieved consistent success with the ability to transform HR and an organization's people into a source of competitive advantage. Few of our members are as engaged in UTC as Sue. She currently serves as co-chair of our HR Peer-to-Peer -peer Forum. Thank you, Sue, for your commitment to UTC and our efforts. Our CTO of the year, Jody Bailey from Plural Side. We really like that enthusiasm. Judy was uh, Jody, sorry. Jody was selected to receive CTO of the year among 212 other CTOs that are members of UTC. This is significant. Under his leadership, Pluralsight has rightfully positioned itself as a global leader in online learning for technology professionals. Aaron almost made it as well. So. Uh, Anyway, that's, we'll ask him about that after. Um, he has positioned the company for long-term success by focusing on continual innovation and entrepreneurial thinking. His high standards and fearless tactics allowed the company to grow its revenue by 70% from 2014 to 2015. He has been a longtime active supporter of the CTO Forum and other UTC events. Thank you, Jody, for your many contributions. Woo! All right, our CFO of the year, Brenda Reese from Arbiter Sports. <laughs> Brenda was selected to receive CFO of the year among 218 other CFOs that are members of UTC. As CFO at Arbiter Sports, Brenda is an active participant at UTC CFO Forums, which is one of our most active executive groups. Her knowledge, experience, and willingness to enrich others within the CFO Forum made her an asset to our community and a leader who exemplifies the principles we espouse. Brenda has not only contributed to the local industry in Utah, her skills have positively impacted Arbiter Sports as they emerge as a leader in the technology ecosystem. Big hand for Brenda. All right, our Women in Tech champion, Catherine Murphy from Demandware. All right. The unanimous choice for this year's Women in Tech Award, Catherine has been an outstanding contributor to UTC, the tech industry, and an invaluable longtime leader at Demandware, where she serves as VP of Engineering Stores. She actively gives back to the community while serving on missions for the Retail Orphan Initiative that leverages executives from the retail technology industry across the country to create and improve schools and education in third world countries and around the world. At UTC, Catherine is co-chair of the Product Management Forum and as an active supporter and presenter at the annual Counselor's Day, driving value to STEM education to over 850 counselors each year. Her topic this year, why Modern Technology Needs Women will no doubt be a very popular session. Let's give her a big hand again. All right, our Distinguished Service Award goes to Brent Lorimer and Mark Manidegger. So we relied heavily on Brent during the 2016 legislative session where he spent countless hours drafting compromise language for the much contested HB 251 non-compete agreement compromise. He negotiated an extremely important compromise to this bill which, which ended up as a drastic improvement to our industry. He's been an active participant in our public policy forum where he, we, we relied heavily on his enterprise and input. Let's give Brent a big hand. Thank you. Our trustee of the year, Vance Checkets from EMC. So he's uh, 
Vance was our engaged board member. Uh, some of the things that Brent was involved with that we just mentioned, Vance was deeply involved with as well. He's been a huge contributor as the lead tech executive for UTC in negotiations for HB 251, which resulted in an outstanding compromise for the non-compete non agreement. I know this was of great consternation to many of you in this room and across our state. It was not just the technology industry only. Um, I don't think anyone realized how impactful this would be, nor the bucket of everything that gets thrown into non-compete agreements, but the compromise was wonderful. Uh, Vance was key. He also created STEM Match with his EMC developers, which will allow teachers to use an app to get, with, to get help from industry in the classroom starting this fall. So this is another significant contribution, which uh, we greatly appreciate as an organization. Thank you, Vance, for your outstanding contributions and dedication to our efforts. So. stories that could be told. Okay, lots of pain and suffering as well. So, all right, and finally, CEO of the year, Frank Maylett from Rise Point. All right. <laughs> Formerly known as Steeton. Many of you know, uh, probably heard about Steeton and the innovative things they're doing. They recently changed their name. It's been about, has it been four weeks, three weeks? Yeah, just recently. So, exciting progress. UTC is pleased to recognize Frank as CEO of the year. Frank brings more than 20 years of experience leading, selling, and expanding software service organizations. When Frank was announced as president and CEO of Steeton last year, now Rise Point, Rob Ludy, Steeton executive chairman of the board, said Frank is recognized for his intensity, intelligence, and integrity, and is the right leader to carry forward Steeton's hallmark of excellence and lead a new phase of rapid growth and expansion for the organization. Frank has demonstrated expertise in refining product strategy as well as leadership, passion for success, and vision, which will be essential to, I'm going to change this to Rise Point's growth in today's digital and rapidly expanding marketplace. Frank will propel the company forward with the speed and insights required to capitalize on the opportunities in front of us. With all Frank is doing, he has also been a tremendous support of UTC. He's an active participant in our CEO forum and contributes to UTC in more ways than we can mention at this time. Congratulations, Frank, and thank you for your leadership and ongoing support of UTC. All right, well, let's give everybody that won awards one last big hand. We appreciate our legislators that had to dart out to their, meet their other commitments. So it's amazing what goes on in our legislative session, as brief as it is, and all the ongoing work that uh, continues unofficially and officially, so in the roles they're in. Um, now I'm honored to be able to take a couple of minutes to introduce Scott Watterson, our keynote. Um, I will say right in the beginning, take a minute to fill out these, uh, the papers. They will all be entered in a drawing. Do this now and not after. Um, Icon is, has just generously donated some great prizes. I actually have one of the prizes, the uh, Tour de France training, trainer. You've probably seen it advertised. It's a great product. I think, is it third, third gen? Fourth gen. Third generation. So uh, I can attest to uh, the, in fact, I have a lot of their products. Um, I have a gym at home, in fact, full of them. But uh, that's beside the point. But just so you're aware, um, I think it's important to know you can, you can read this. I'll hit some of the high points. Um, I've known quite a bit about Scott, actually, over the years. But he's co-founder and chairman and CEO of Icon Health and Fitness. Um, as many of you know, they own a lot of the uh, different uh, 
fitness product companies in the market. You may not be aware of that, including Nordic Track, Proform, and Weeder for Home Fitness, and Free Motion Fitness for the health club market. Uh, I know many of us use their products in the clubs that we're members of. Um, the, the company's brand for fitness wearables and subscription fitness solutions is iFit. Icon's award-winning uh, running shoe brand is Altera Footwear. I have a little, a couple pair. They're great shoes, but uh, not that I was asked to do that. But they really are. Um, I think one of the more important things about Scott that I did not know is he has been instrumental in over 200 patents at Icon, um, which is a significant accomplishment for those of you that are involved in IP. And uh, I think many of you are aware that they are located in Logan. He is the co-founder, and uh, we'd like to welcome him to the stage to tell his story and share some of his experiences at this time. So let's give Scott a great big hand. Thank you, Chet, and I'll give you my check later for that advertisement. That was very good. I want to uh, really thank you for letting me be here with you today. I was really impressed with the awards and, and the accomplishments that have been accomplished uh, individually and collectively as a group. I think this is a great organization to be part of, and I think it's a great state to be in. Certainly, it might be because of the thin air, but there seems to be... Uh, the ability to get our brain cells moving a lot faster in this state than maybe other states. I don't know. Maybe it's just because we're in the mountains and we're a little bit higher to the source that uh, some of the sources where we generate all that creative thinking. I'm not sure. Icon is a great uh, company. We uh, came here just after Brigham Young did. We've been here for about 40 years and uh, so before tech was fashionable, uh, we were up in Cache Valley and we uh, were quietly developing a very nice business. Over the last 40 years, we've become the largest fitness supplier of exercise equipment in the world and have also been able now to participate in the wearable technology and some of the fast advancing uh, uh, product solutions for interactive technologies through our iFit business. If you will, I'll just give you just a minute to see some of our products and uh, give you just a view of who we are and we'll just tee that up right now. So that gives you a little background of who we are and what we do. Uh, uh, excited to be part of uh, this uh, venue here today and talk to you about the creative process. I think the creative process is what inspires entrepreneurism, which grows industry and creates, uh, if you will, society's better side. And I think it's done in four steps. I'd like to suggest to you that you look at these four steps as you evaluate your own businesses and as you continue to pursue your opportunities in, in business. Number one is you first have to create. Two, you need to innovate. Three, you need to iterate. And four, you might find this a little unusual, but you need to communicate. So we've been having a great lunch and it's all about what we ate, so I thought we would keep the message around that. So it is create, innovate, iterate, and communicate. What does it mean to, to if you will, to create? It means to bring something into existence, it's something original, it's new, it gives you first mover advantage, it gives you an opportunity to 
organize something and, and make a difference. It's those aha moments. It's the back of a napkin at lunch. It's the time where all comes to, to a need is approached and you address the need and come up with a solution. The environment that we create that allows, if you will, creative thinking is critical. That energy of thought to take something from concept to existence cannot be bothered by negative thinking. Creativity oftentimes is very shy and you have to have an opportunity to let it emerge not only in your own mind and thinking but in those that participate with you in the process. That creative beginning is the foundation of many things that are great. However, that doesn't mean that is the only part of a creative innovative process. After you've created something, then the opportunity comes for you to build on that, to change it, to add to it. That is called innovation. That is where you adapt it, where you uh, establish uh, something new with it. It's oftentimes featured based. It, it, it allows you to expand the user base. It allows you to add to and build upon that which has been created. That gives you, if you will, oftentimes a second mover advantage if you get into the game early with innovation. I will give you uh, our own example of that. Motorized treadmills didn't used to be in the home. Just shortly after Brigham Young came, uh, the medical community started to make motorized treadmills. The problem was is you couldn't use those motorized treadmills anywhere but in a commercial setting because they required 240, uh, 220 volt uh, electricity. So the innovative people at ICON thought about it and we said, okay, let's figure out a way to take an AC drive and turn it into a DC drive, thus allowing us to have 110 volt uh, uh, motor, motorized treadmills. That brings the treadmill into the home. That's the first innovative advancement. After it got into the home, my wife complained that that wasn't a really good place for a treadmill. It should be in the garage. Well, I realized that that wouldn't be a good place for our industry to have to uh, sell to is treadmills into the garage. So the second innovation that came about really is when we space saved it. We moved it so after we were done with it, we folded it up out of the room so you could vacuum, you could uh, resume the activities of the room that you needed to. Uh, my wife still believes that she should get a royalty for that innovative idea. <laughs> After that, then uh, comes the ability and the need to expand the user experience on a treadmill. Because we all like to run outside, we all like to experience that time, and sometimes running on a treadmill inside can be boring. And so what we had to do and what we did is we partnered with a company you might be familiar with called Google. Uh, we are one of, of eight strategic partners with Google Maps that have come up with ways to utilize that technology on inboard appliances and in-house appliances, namely treadmills. And so let me show you what we did uh, with Google and Google Maps. Hi, I'm James McGill, one of the software engineers on the Google Maps APIs based out of beautiful Sydney, Australia. I'm here in Logan, Utah at the headquarters of iFit for the world's first digital five kilometer run. Last week we took a runner with us to France to run the beautiful streets of Paris and our iFit watch tracked all the information on our run and stored it in the iFit cloud. So when she landed back at iFit headquarters, she was able to share that exact run she experienced in Paris with all of the runners here. On the treadmill console, they were able to see the exact same streets that she saw and even feel the same incline and decline of those streets. While we were going uphill, the treadmill went up. Going downhill, the treadmill went down. It was incredible. It was doing it for you and you're getting this amazing workout. It was so fun. You're no longer just staring at a wall, you get to visit everywhere in the world, and you get to get fit while you're doing it. It's not a boring treadmill run. You can literally run anywhere in the world anytime you want. Phenomenal. Unlike any other treadmill experience I've had. This is one of the most incredible, out-of-the-box integrations that I've ever seen. 
And the best thing about it is that it's making everybody's life better. iFit and Google have completely changed the way that you view fitness. Okay, thank you. So that is where we have taken the technology, adapted it to uh, our user case, put it on a treadmill. By the way, we were the first company that uh, incorporated an Android tablet uh, on any appliance in the world. In fact, we were the first company to use a 10-inch Android tablet in the whole world. And that was many years ago. But then as that has developed now, we've been adding and adding and adding to the iFit solutions. And this is the, the latest, if you will, or one of the latest uh, adaptations that we've talked about. Innovation is critical. Innovation is part of really, let's just hit it one more time, that's where you add to, you modify, you enhance, you increase that which has originally been created. Watch out if you are a creator only because the innovators will step over you and past you if you don't continue to innovate after you've come up with your good idea. The next, uh, let me just give you a little teaser, if you will, about what we might be thinking about is what is the next adaptation or innovation to treadmills. Let your imagination go. So it might not be dancing with the stars, but it might be dancing on your treadmill. Who knows? Let's just see where we go from here. The next step in the creative process is to iterate. So first you create, then you innovate, and then you iterate. This is the part of discipline. This is the part that maybe many of us don't enjoy that's here today, but I might add to you as an essential and critical part to discipline yourself to continue to improve, and that's what it means to iterate, to continue the process of improvement, continue the process of refining, continue the process of adding to and building and making a better mousetrap. If you then go from creative to innovative to iterating, then you are able to stay ahead of the game, you're able to give the user a reason for purchasing your products, and you're give, giving yourself an advantage and a differentiation from all those who in the sea of competitors that you compete against. That opportunity is best example by this small shoe company that you heard uh, Chet talk about earlier. It's Ultra. He mispronounced it, but we are an early uh, stage company. Happened to be the fastest growing um, specially run shoe company in the world right now. It started because there were three entrepreneurs in, in the uh, down in uh, Provo Valley that, that uh, had a great innovative product. You know, they, they designed something quite unique. They decided to put a shoe, make it look like it and be like and act like a foot. So it's a zero drop, it's a wide toe base so your toes could splay. And it's a wonderful technology, very creative. But we had to get the message out. Because just having the best mousetrap doesn't work anymore. Just building the field and expecting that they will come doesn't work anymore. So therefore, the fourth step of the creative process is the communicative process. Yeah, that's you, not me. Good. Okay, no problem. <laughs> it could have been me. Half the time it is, so forgive me. <laughs> the communication process, we cannot minimize the value of it in the creative process. Let me show you what we did to get, this is one of our early uh, video advertisements and we put it in multimedia, uh, uh, multimediums now. But this is how we now communicated this technology with the Ultra Shoes. At Ultra, we don't believe in limits or telling runners they can't or it's not possible. That's why we dared to make shoes with a foot-shaped toe box and gave runners zero drop technology so that runners could say goodbye to limits too. Ultra invites you to experience the difference everyone's talking about with zero risk. Love your run or send them back within 30 days, no questions asked. Get your pair today at ultrarunning.com. Ultra, zero limits. Okay. 
So that was early. Now the shoe that we're going to launch, and actually the one that you're going to have a chance to get today, uh, which we'll deliver next week. So don't call us and bug us because it's not going to ship until next week. Uh, but after that, uh, there, the uh, back orders has been phenomenal by the, the specially run community on this shoe. We put some technology into a shoe, flexible sensory, so that we can tell where and how your foot lands. Obviously, we can do uh, what some of our buddies up in the Northwest have done uh, relative to cadence and counting and whatnot. But a lot more importantly, we can now call out stride. We can call out pace. We can see whether you're pronating or supernating. We can do a lot with that technology. And that's, the, if you will, the next innovation in the shoe company. And of course, we will need to communicate that. Communication is everything. I do love the movie, Field of Dreams. I do love Kevin Costner's idea of building it and they will come. In today's world, it won't happen that way. Build it and get a five-star rating and five-star reviews and then they will come. That's what you need to do now. And how you go about that is really important. While traditional mediums continue to work, every day they're becoming less and less effective, giving rise to the new, more targeted mediums to make more and more desired content available and giving you a chance to have more and more instant and immediate response to that content and most importantly making that content more and more user centric. Because of that change and that technology change that's going on, you need then to not only look at traditional uh, advertising mediums, but you obviously need to look at Google. You need to look at Amazon. You need to look at YouTube. You need to look at the whole polythora, if you will, of social mediums that deal with Facebook and and um, tweet, uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. I can Twitter or Twitter, either way. Blogging, uh, whatever it takes. But now with this splintered approach to marketing, it is so important that you have a creative solution to how you get your message across. Follow the same approach again. Create an idea, innovate, iterate on it, and communicate. As you do that, you will find success and you will become the first place, not the second place. They who communicate win. Let me show you some of the ways Icon has communicated recently. I'd like to end with a challenge. I'd like you to think for a minute with me about the following. We live in a remarkable world. It's a remarkable time to be here. Innovation, creativity, creati creati <clears throat> creativity, innovation, technology has brought a wonderful place. It's amazing. I don't care where you want to turn, where you want to look. Look at the food industry, look at the entertainment industry, look at the travel industry, look at the, uh, if you will, the standard of living changes. It's a remarkable world we live in. And those intended consequences from a lot of hard work by yourselves and others that have led the way are creating and continue to create a much better environment and a much better place to live. However, there has also come some unintended consequences from the technology. There has come some unintended consequences from innovation. Let me tell you just a few for you to consider. Diabetes is up 764% in the last 20 years. 
child obesity is at epidemic levels, not only in the United States, but now throughout the world. Heart disease, hypertension is continuing to rise. Mental illness is at staggering levels. These are the unintended consequences of all that we enjoy with the good. May I suggest to you, if you want to build the better place, if you want to continue to expand your fortunes, that you address these areas, that you look at these places, and you see ways where technology can make a difference, can change behavior, can enhance human performance, that can strengthen character and build strength again. We've all enjoyed a wonderful lunch. I'd like to sell you all a treadmill right after lunch so you can exercise. I won't. Because your idea might be better than mine. But I, I invite you to go after this opportunity. Every day we create something, there are intended and unintended consequences. May I suggest to you this might be a time for you to look at these unintended consequences and go make a fortune. Thank you. Well, that was great, Scott. We really appreciate it. Thanks for sharing some of the uh, fun and exciting videos and the innovations as well. Um, just very quickly, I failed to mention a couple of uh, individuals in Senator Hatch's office that we need to give a big shout out and a, hand, a big hand to. Uh, one is Rob Porter and the other is Matt Sandgren. They were instrumental in uh, securing and getting and obtaining Tim Cook's permission to be here. So at our next event, in uh, our big event, September 30th, so just to remind you all at the Hall of Fame. So let's give them a big hand. Melanie will send them the video. <laughs> The least I can do. Thanks, Melanie. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, just recognize our sponsors very quickly. And uh, I'm going to ask Scott to come back up here as well as we do the drawings. Everyone, please, uh, you'll see some, some of our, the UTC team walking around. Please give them these blue sheets. Rich is going to come up as well. But uh, while they're gathering those, hold them up quickly. I know that you all filled them out when I suggested it earlier. You saw examples of what will be awarded uh, in some of the vid that last video uh, for sure. Anyway, to our sponsors, thank you so much. Anaplan brings together an unrivaled enterprise planning and modeling engine, collaboration in the cloud, and a simple interface for business users. Anaplan users can choose from over 100 pre-built planning apps from the Anaplan App Hub or easily build their own. So let's give Anaplan a big hand. Thank you. The second, Hire Utah. Hire Utah is the eHarmony for matching jobs and education. Hire Utah has developed an online platform to match job seekers with the right training and jobs through a skills, culture, and personality assessment to predict an employer's overall job satisfaction and engagement. Thank you, Hire Utah. And then finally, Cumulus Media is here today to promote activities within Utah's vibrant tech community to their seven radio stations and 800,000 listeners. Uh, their focus is to help you to be known before someone even starts looking for your product or service. Sounds like we all need to talk to them, especially after Scott's great remarks. Let's give Cumulus a great big hand as well. Thank you. Thank you, sponsors. Now have we gathered, have we gathered all of the blue forms? Oh, there's a couple of a couple of others. Let's get them up here quickly. Thank you, everyone who's gathering them. And uh, we'll get the, let's get the big silver bowl. Any, yes. Any other color comment from uh, on the, the drawing for for Scott? What are we drawing first? Are we drawing the which order? Whatever you want. Should we go we'll start three, with the two, small one. Stuff. Yeah. Small stuff. Small first. stuff. Yeah. Go ahead and comment if you want. All right. The very first thing that we're going to uh, give away is uh, some uh, wearables bands, wrist wearable bands that uh, 
be careful because it measures your sleep, it measures everywhere you go, of course, as you know, and it's uh, also interactive with all the treadmills and everything else you saw. So these are uh, nice wearables, and we'll give away five of them. Here we go. Number one. You must be present to win. Kyle Robbins. Present? Okay. Kyle, all right. Come on up. Number two. Gary Atkins. Good. Way to go, Gary. Get some enthusiasm for these guys. That's pretty good. Okay. And the third one is Wes Porter. Wes, okay. Way to go, Wes. Fourth one is Kent Bowman. All right. Okay. Way to go, Kent. That wasn't intentional, Kent. Oh, there he is. No. <laughs> and finally... Christine Smith, or Kristen, right. Kristen. Kristen Smith, Kristen excuse me, Smith. Kristen, right. way to go, Kristen. All right, uh, the next thing we'll do is uh, we'll give away two pair of the I, uh, Ultra IQ running shoe. That's the shoe with the sensors in it that we will ship next week, so don't try to get them this week from us, please. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, Galen Murdoch. Galen Murdoch. Okay, good job. All right, Galen. Now, if you're not going to run in them, we're going to get somebody else to get those, but come on up. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And that is Tara. Tara True? Tara Thu? Tara. Come on up, Tara. All right. Let's give Tara a big round of applause. This is really rigged because her mother is my assistant up in Logan. No conflict. <laughs> and uh, I've known her since she was a little pup. And congratulations to you for, for all that you do for the state and for carrying that wonderful baby. Good luck to you these next two weeks. All right. So finally, we are going to give away uh, the Tour de France bike. That's the articulating bike that follows Google Maps and the train. You can climb all the way up to Alp d'Huez or anywhere else in the world. There's uh, a photo here too on the screen. There's a photo of it here on the uh, screen. And um, so I hope this individual's here. Troy Akagi. Troy Akagi. Okay, Troy, come on. Okay. Come on up here. Is good enough for a pitch? <laughs> yeah, he's okay. handsome. Come well, over here with Scott. Congratulations. Hey, thanks a lot. Put in there, Troy, uh, what do you do? All right. Go ahead to stand on that side. All right. One, two, three. All right. And here's your here's okay. okay. All right. Everyone, thank you so much. We uh, greatly appreciate your support and attendance. We look forward to seeing all of you and your friends and family when Tim Cook pre presents on September 30th. Get registered now. We have uh, a key that's turned up. If you're missing a key, it looks like it's probably a Toyota or a Honda. Single key. Just uh, come see me at the front and uh, hopefully it's for our group and not the group next door but everybody thank you big hand to everybody and uh, we hope you have a wonderful day